Watersheds are the ultimate and final units for stormwater management. A watershed is an area of land that drains to one water body, such as a lake or the ocean. Everything is connected in a watershed, and what happens upstream impacts conditions downstream. When considering the watershed, we must deal with stormwater sources, transmission, and impacts. To assess the impact of land use activities on urban streams, we start by delineating the watershed boundary, identifying the stream location, and then determining the conditions of the riparian buffer zone. This process helps managers identify risks within the watershed, such as areas that could flood, shown here in yellow. When working at the watershed scale, elevation, slope, and other factors presented here should be considered. Building a Geographic Information System, or GIS, is an appropriate first step. Stream Channels The current practice is to direct urban runoff through stormwater pipes directly into streams. This creates a flashy stream flow regime, meaning higher peaks in stream flow over short amounts of time. This can result in bank erosion and increased sediment transport. Traditionally, this is mitigated by channelizing the river and straightening stream corridors. In some cases, armored banks are used, which are still prominent in many municipalities. We now know that these designs are detrimental to the aquatic biota and can lead to increased flooding problems in the lowland of the watershed. The recommended solution is to maintain a natural stream channel. This makes use of back channels, riffle, and pool systems to dissipate the energy of the water. This helps to reduce erosion caused by the stream. Large woody debris improves habitat for a wide range of aquatic organisms. Many channelized streams have been restored, but in some dense urban areas, the energy of runoff entering a stream can still cause bank erosion. Richard Bowes shows us one way to deal with this. This is a treatment called riprap. Rain lands on an urban environment that's highly, highly impervious. Very quickly the rain's concentrated and put into pipes and then injected into the stream. Lots of energy and then the energy in that water usually manifests itself in erosion of the stream banks, right? So you can see the large pieces of angular rock that are put on the banks of the stream and that's to stop this erosion that, taking, that takes place with too much rain and such high energy. A key component to maintaining a more natural stream channel is protecting the riparian buffer zone. Riparian buffer zones are vegetated areas next to water resources that provide protection from non-point source pollution. They also provide bank stabilization and aquatic and wildlife habitat. Well-vegetated riparian buffers can also moderate water temperature, take up nutrients, and provide a noise barrier. Urban streams with a riparian buffer zone and mixed substrate have higher biodiversity than streams next to urban development. Current riparian areas regulations in the Lower Mainland of BC require a 30-meter wide vegetated buffer zone on both sides of a stream corridor containing only developments that will not result in harmful alteration of fish habitat. However, research has shown that aquatic ecosystem protection is enhanced with a 60 to 100 meter buffer strip. Competing land uses on a limited land area make these wider buffer zones difficult to implement in an urban environment. Using park space, like William Griffin Park around Mosquito Creek in North Vancouver, is one way to allow for wider buffers. Good riparian buffers can be thought of as a continuous three-zone concept that addresses surface water, soil water seepage, and groundwater inflow. Also consider that watershed boundaries do not typically take groundwater into account. Allowing runoff to be detained within the buffer zone, facilitating infiltration, and having a well-developed and vegetated buffer can greatly reduce the impact of stormwater runoff. Wetlands. Wetlands that are incorporated in a riparian buffer zone can improve streamwater quality by retaining sediments and allowing wetland soils and plants to take up nutrients and metals and to reduce pathogens. Riparian wetlands can occur naturally 
or can be constructed to store and delay urban runoff. Flooding Issues To protect low-lying urban areas from flooding, dikes, concrete structures, and other flood-proofing measures such as pump systems are often used. Strict land use zoning can prevent certain developments from being built in the floodplain, reducing the damage from flooding. This is a challenge when there is development pressure on a limited land base. Given increased climatic variability and densification of urban landscapes, additional measures need to be considered. An innovative approach to flood protection is called design flood storage. This is where we designate topographic depressions within the watershed as a place for temporary water storage during very large storms. Areas with minimal building infrastructure, such as playgrounds, parks, golf courses, and agricultural areas can effectively serve to temporarily store water that can be released after the peak storm has passed. Recently, design flood storage has worked effectively in a number of storm events in the Mississippi River Basin in the U.S. and in the Red River Basin in Manitoba. It is recommended that these measures become a more integral part of urban stormwater management. When used together, innovations at all three scales can be effective in restoring the system to a more natural hydrologic regime, leading to improved water quality. This has worked in the city of Surrey. In the Campbell Heights area, we have a, a treatment terrain for water quality. Uh, the industrial land has to have 50% of its frontage uh, drains to bioswales uh, of some sort. Um, their parking areas have to all go to oil grease interceptors at the property line. The city pipe system is actually a perforated pipe to try to get infiltration as much as we can. Before it enters the creek, it goes into a mechanical device, which is a storm scepter, uh, to clean any sediments and everything off. After the storm scepter, it then goes into, we've made like stilling basins, like so it's more of a little marsh at the outlet. And, the, and then a little channel before it hits the main channel. So we've got various levels of treatment we have, so it's more of a protection because we weren't too sure how the industrial component would be. We don't know what kind of industries are gonna be coming in here. And we really wanna protect the creek because this creek, as we said, is we've rest, restored it and we've got a salmon run in it. So we need as much as we can for water quality. The innovations shown in this video, restoring stream channels, Maintaining riparian buffer zones and design flood storage have the potential to significantly reduce flooding and environmental problems in urban watersheds. More green infrastructure now, over time, is going to be less riprap, less cost to come in and do all of this engineering work, which as you can see is not necessarily as natural for the stream environment. Challenges remain, both in incorporating these actions into new developments and in rehabilitating and retrofitting established urban watersheds. The stormwater management champions we have featured in our series are working to change this. Designs that mimic nature and infiltrate rainwater at the source are slowly becoming more mainstream in a number of municipalities. No single innovation is sufficient to reduce the flood risk. Not all combinations of options will work because of differences in climate, topography, geology, soils, hydrologic conditions, and spatial constraints. However, a combination of the most appropriate innovations is the best adaptation strategy to reduce flooding risks and improve the water quality in urban streams. Stop till the sun has set on this mountain, sheds all the flesh from the bone.